you guys are having an awesome day after spring break. Uh, hopefully you were able to have an enjoyable break and uh, just relax a little bit, get caught up. And hopefully you're ready for the, the final stretch. We're on the final countdown here. Uh, so today what we did was uh, finish the lab that we started on Friday. It was a little tough, but we did it. Um, finished that up, and then we actually, I presented a problem. And I'm going to present the same problem. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, it's a little small. There we go. Okay, so what I want you to do is try to solve this. Now, if you want to pause the video and try to solve this, but I do want to give you one piece of background information before you try to solve this, okay? And that background information involves Phoenix, there we go, involves knowing that when something is moving rotation or rotationally moving, uh, the kinetic energy is not only one half the inertia omega squared, but we also have to consider one half mass velocity squared. Okay, so all of that is going to factor into the kinetic energy of something rotationally moving. Okay, so if you have to pause the video, please, please do so. Uh, now would be the time to do that. Oh, I didn't mean to. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So hopefully you can still see the screen. So the, this is the question, and what the question, what we have to consider is all our energies. Okay, so all our energies considered, well, we have Kinetic energy initial, potential energy initial, uh, elastic potential energy initial, work, non conserved, uh, let's see, is equal to kinetic energy final, potential energy final, elastic potential energy final. Okay, so in this problem, do we have an initial potential energy? No, because it's on the ground. So we can get rid of that. Is there any elastic potential energy in this entire problem? No, there's no elastic. So we can get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, is there any work, work non-conserved? No, we're not considering any, any non-conserved work. Okay, so we only have three factors to consider. Okay. Kinetic energy initial, kinetic energy final, and potential energy final. Okay, so let's write out all our equations. All right, so kinetic energy initial. Well, we have one half the inertia initial omega squared, okay, plus one half mv squared. Right? So that's all my initial initial velocity. Okay, so that's equal to, well, same thing, one half omega final squared plus one half mass final velocity squared plus potential energy, which is mgh. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit larger. All right, so now from the problem, I was told my inertia, uh, let me go back. My inertia was 2 fifth mr squared. Okay, so let's write that in. 2 fifths mr squared. Okay, what's omega? What's omega equal to? Well, hopefully you remember that omega times my radius is actually equal to the velocity. Okay. 
omega times r is actually equal to the velocity. Now, give me one second. Uh, Okay, I'm okay. back. So let's fill that in. Okay. So what is since I'm solving for omega, I'm going to divide by r divided by r. So here we're gonna have v squared over r squared. Okay. And then that's plus one half that velocity initial squared. Once again, this is going to be equal to, that's my problem. okay, once again, uh, this is going to be equal to one half times two fifths m r squared times, oh, that's the last initial, what am I doing? I'm so sorry. This is going to be velocity final squared over radius squared plus m g h <whistles> holy smokes that's a lot of variables to consider now what's crazy is what do you notice on each segment of the plus sign what can we get rid of okay well mass we can get rid of mass right if we get rid of mass here we get rid of mass there, we can get rid of mass there, and we can get rid of mass there. But what else? Well, we have r squared and r squared. r squared divided by r squared, well, those cancel out. Let's get rid of that. r squared, r squared. Well, that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we have a lot of halves out here. What if we multiply everything by 2? Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. I'm going to have to put a 2 there. So let's clean this up a little bit. We have 2 fifths velocity initial squared plus velocity initial squared is equal to 2 fifths velocity final squared We're good, we're good. Okay. Velocity final squared. Just making sure I'm not forgetting something. I am forgetting something, and I'm sorry. Sorry about this. I'm forgetting this part in the final. I knew I was forgetting something. Forgetting that part in the final. So let's actually add that in. Well, we can easily get rid of the mass, right? We cancel the mass in all of them. So I need to add, well, we got rid of the one half as well. So I got to add velocity final squared. That looks right. That looks correct. Okay. That's my bad. So what I did, what I forgot to do, all of this came from that. Forgot to implement this. So we got rid of that. We got rid of that. So I put that down. Okay. Plus two gravity. So let's see. So we got 1.4 times the velocity initial squared uh, is equal to, once again, 1.4 velocity final squared plus 2 gravity is 9.8. The height, the height of this ball, well, what we're actually going to have to do is, well, the ramp. 
The ramp is at a 25 degree angle and it travels three meters up. And so what we're gonna have to do, so my toe out of there. Okay, uh, so we have the hypotenuse and your trying to solve it for that. So you're gonna do the sine. Sine of 25 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So you're gonna have to plug that in a calculator. Uh, give me one second. Calculator up. times three. I got one point, I'm going to round to one point three. Okay, so my height is one point three. Okay, my velocity initial in the problem told me it was 5.5. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to plug 5.5 in. So I'm going to have 1.4 times 5.5 squared. So I got 42.35 is equal to 1.4 velocity final squared plus, let's do all that. Okay. So let's keep going. Okay, so that is how you solve this type of problem. It was very difficult and there was a lot of factors we didn't know, but the best thing is we were able to cancel a lot of things out. Okay, so that was a quite extensive problem, but hopefully you were able to follow along and get the correct answer. Okay, uh, so that is all we're going to do today. Tomorrow we're going to continue moving on. We're going to talk about rotational work and power. Uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so if you have any questions, send me an email. Uh, if not, I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys later.